Hey guys, I decided to mobily vlog again for this 18th, is it really the 18th day of Veda? My goodness. Because I haven't done it yet this year and I did it a lot last year and I actually really enjoyed it. Today, I want to talk about advanced care plans and living wills. Why? Because today, I went ahead and finally did what I've been talking about doing for like more than a year and filled one out for myself and had it signed by two witnesses. Which, I don't know, in the state of Tennessee at least, there's a form that you don't have to have notarized. And it's important because if you end up in a tragic car accident and have a traumatic brain injury, if you stroke out and are now um, in a deep coma slash you've just had significant brain injury and are no longer responsive and able to communicate your needs, if you have a massive heart attack and are now unconscious, um, it kind of goes on and on. I mainly see like massive strokes and brain bleeds where people can no longer communicate their needs and may not be brain dead, but have a very low quality of life and families have to make decisions on if they want to escalate care or provide supportive measures to maintain the quality of life that they have or make decisions to stop escalating care and let the body take its natural course that it started, which will eventually be to support a decline for that patient because you've decided the quality of life that they will be able to maintain from this point forward is not a quality of life that is acceptable to that person. Acceptable in the form that you don't want to continue to have supportive measures to maintain them staying at that level when it's not a level that they would want to stay at if their body can't... It's not like you're killing them. You're allowing their body to naturally decline the way it wants to instead of providing things like an artificial airway, an artificial feeding tube, um, instead of having like very aggressive and painful surgeries and things when you know that the baseline quality of life is going to be, um, depending on the patient, maybe not meaningful. And for different people, different people have different ideas of what a meaningful quality of life is for them. So these forms that you can get and fill out have those different levels of quality of life and you can choose which ones that you have decided are unacceptable for you. So permanent unconsciousness, permanent confusion, um, always dependent on others for all of your bathing, feeding, moving, um, you know, a total care type of situation or um, an end stage um, chronic disease process, whether it be cancer, heart failure, something where you've done all the treatment that is available and there won't be any hope of any more improvement in that treatment or care. And so then you can choose the type of things that treatments you want if you're in a quality of life that you deem um, unacceptable for you. So you can choose if you want to um, not be resuscitated or do be resuscitated if you want a breathing tube at that point or not. Or if you want to have treatment if you get an infection, if you want to still be treated for that infection. Or if you want to have a feeding tube and, you know, artificial feeding in those stages. It's something that's really important to think about and to talk about now because I see it every day where people unexpectedly are having to now make decisions for a loved one who has suddenly had um, something like a stroke and they had not talked about it and did not have a plan. And while maybe that person had risk factors into a stroke, you don't expect to find somebody down in the bathroom one morning and now have to be talking about what type of, you know, serious medical decisions that will affect the rest of their life and the quality of the rest of their life. People don't expect to do that um, every day. And your loved ones aren't going to know what to do if you've never talked about it and discussed it. They're going to have to make their best guess. They're probably going to be unsure. And therefore, what will usually end up happening is that we'll do everything we can to give families time to make a decision, which is fine, except for if you have strong feelings that, you know, if you're not going to have a meaningful life or never going to really have any hope of a meaningful interaction, the recognition of your loved ones anymore any communication with your loved ones anymore, which we can often give people, depending on the extent of brain damage, a, well, they might get through this and survive, but depending on the areas and the extent 
of brain damage, we can say something like, they're not really ever going to be um, walking and communicating well again. So, not my car now. But yeah, so that can prevent one, unnecessary and expensive medical treatments for your family members and loved one. If, if it's something that you know you don't want, it can also prevent a lot of painful procedures and um, things if you know that that's not something that you deem um, necessary or appropriate given the quality of life that is ex- expected. Now, this isn't something that says that if, if they come in and expect that you can make a meaningful recovery and anticipate that there is something they can do that they don't not do that because the um, advanced care plan can be very clear that it's only in if these conditions are met if they are sure that you will you know be persistently um, chronically confused permanently confused for the rest of your life um, with no recognition of your family members so if you don't meet that condition they're not going to um, follow everything else that comes under all those do not resuscitate etc So, I did that today because I want to make sure that my family members know. And they do know because I've talked about it. But I just, you know, was bored and had the time and was thinking about it. And I highly recommend that you think about it too. Because it's important. And it's something to talk about. Especially um, if your loved ones are at risk for things like a stroke um, or other thing. But even if not, you never know what could happen. And you want to talk about it while they're still able to communicate well what they desire. That's been your Veda for the day. Woohoo, Nurse Erin. Bye, guys.